good morning welcome back we are doing microwaves and antennas according to the syllabus 18 ec 63 in this uh, we already have finished uh, the introduction to loop antennas and uh, the small loop the derivation of the far field in the case of a small loop also was done today we'll be talking about the loop antenna as a general case So let us recap. We are talking about the small loop, and we were finding the field pattern of a small loop antenna. So we were comparing that uh, to a square antenna, which can be treated as four short linear dipoles. So this is one, two, three, four. There are four short linear dipoles. And we also had the assumption that the loop antenna's uh, dimensions that is given by the radius A is lesser, lesser than lambda. Lambda is the wavelength. So now uh, we have found out that the electric field of the small loop with area A is given by the E phi, the far electric field, is 120 pi square i, the retarded current sine theta a by lambda square into r. And uh, the corresponding uh, magnetic field h theta is given by E phi divided by the free space impedance. And here the free space in impedance is r. So it is E phi by 120 pi. So this is an expression for e h theta and E phi. So this we have already done, wherein uh, the small loop was considered equal to a square loop over the same area. Uh, and each of these is considered as a dipole, four dipoles. And we are finding the effect here. So this is your E phi and uh, the same point, e h theta. So in the general case, in the previous case, we were talking about uh, uh, the radius r or the radius a should be lesser, lesser than lambda. And uh, the square loop, the side length L also should be lesser, lesser than lambda. What happens if we uh, considered uh, uh, the antenna size to be any value instead of this uh, d lesser, lesser than lambda? Let me say the lambda is of any value. And also the radius A be located with its center. Okay. So now let us say the loop is not small, especially for perimeters, uh, instead of D lesser, lesser than lambda, we can say perimeters of this loop antenna being lambda by four or larger, that is quarter wavelength or larger. In such a case, uh, we are worried about the current I we should be uniform and in phase around the loop. So how do we get uh, uh, this uniform current and in phase around the loop? You remember uh, we have along with time, we have space. So as the current I travels through the loop, uh, due to the time, the retarded current, you the phase keeps changing. So we have phase shifters uh, being introduced at the periphery so that uh, you can maintain uh, in phase around the loop and uniform and in phase around the loop. So this is your loop of any radius with relation to the coordinates. The loop A here is greater, greater than lambda. So these are the phase shifters. You can see this, these are the small dipoles. And at these we introduce some phase shifters so that uh, they are in phase. And this is a point P at which uh, we are finding the far field uh, E phi and also the H theta. So this is about uh, the effect of uh, the dipoles. Um, and here uh, the A, the area of this is not lesser, lesser than lambda, or this loop perimeter is quarter wavelength and above. This loop perimeter is quarter length and above. So in such cases, where the loop perimeter is quarter length and above, we have these phase shifters for uniform phase. And now we are considering out of so many dipoles, we consider opposite uh, dipoles. This is AD phi and AD phi. This is the length is 
a small length a of d phi. This is making an angle phi here uh, with the x axis and uh, uh, the total uh, vector potential uh, uh, you have to integrate over the loop and hence you can find the far field components. So the current is confined to the loop. What about the vector potentials? We have this uh, a theta and a r, it's equal to zero out of the three uh, dimensions, a theta and a r equal to zero. Uh, so this is uh, a r, only a phi is valid, only a phi is valid. So now we are considering a small point, a small value at point P. This is your point P. So this is D phi, okay. From, due to this uh, A D phi and A D phi, what is the value at this point P? So now this D phi is equal to mu into dm by four pi r. That's you're talking about three D. Dm is, uh, the current moment due to one pair of uh, opposite uh, uh, dipoles of length d phi. And in the phi equal to zero plane, this is your phi equal to zero plane. The phi component of the retarded current uh, due to one pole, this is already done in previous class, that is given by i in square brackets, a d phi, a d phi is the length of this into cos phi. And now what is a, uh, retarded current I in square brackets is equal to I naught the current through this E to the power J omega T. Along with T, we are having one more spatial constant. The co spatial constant is R by C. Okay, and R is a, a radius and uh, the distance and C is your, as you know, the velocity of light. And I naught is a peak current in time in loop. And as you see, this I is equal to just not I naught into E j maga t. As it travels a distance, as it travels a distance r, the phase also changes. E power j omega theta. Theta is a phase here. And the theta consists of not only time varying t, but also the spatial constant. So take care of this. We have this phase shifters here, which will maintain this. So now we are talking about uh, the field at uh, a small point P, and that is given by dA phi mu into dm by 4 pi r. dm is a current moment, okay, the moment that is being generated here because of the current in the two dipoles. This is a small dipole, a d phi length. This is another small dipole. This is also of length a d phi. Both of them will act together at the point P they will act together at the point P. As seen in the previous exam, module four, uh, we have uh, derived for A D phi as mu into dm by four pi r. So this is your r. So this is about uh, the cross section in exit plane through the loop. So here we have this phi here. Now we can take it in the x and uh, z plane. So this is your x z plane. When you look at in the exit plane, uh, so this is the point P, this is a far field. The far field will be almost equal to parallel lines. So it's making an angle theta. And uh, uh, these are the two dipole moments. This is a perimeter of the loop, okay? And uh, when they come back here from this, you just do beta A cos phi. This whole thing two beta A cos phi same theta, you can call it as xi. You can introduce a new term that is sign to take care of uh, this distance. Okay, this is this distance. That is a two beta a cos phi sine theta. So now uh, this is the figure six that we are talking about, and this figure six uh, talks about the uh, resultant moment uh, at a large distance due to a pair of diametrical dipoles. Okay, now dm that we are talking about is due to one pole, but when we talk about dm due to a pair of poles, it is given by 2j i into a, the current i, a into, that is sine xi by two. This is the results are from module four. And as we have seen, xi is the two beta a cos phi sine theta. So this is a figure, two beta a cos phi sine theta, that's your psi. Okay, and then that is sine phi by two cos phi, and then a d phi is your uh, pole dipole 
and then two times of this dipole and the effect of the current I, the J is, as you know, 90 degrees. And uh, substituting the value of uh, Xi in this equation, 1.3. Okay, one will have an effect of cos phi, the other will have an effect of cos Xi, sin Xi. And substituting this, we get dm, dm as a resultant moment. So substitute just the value of sine we know, sine of beta a cos phi sine beta d phi. And this equation, when we put it in equation 1.1, whereas it is nothing but a d phi is mu into dm by 4 pi r, we have got the dm, okay, that is nothing but the current moment due to one pair. So we have got the equation for dm now. The equation for dm is uh, uh, this, dm is equal to 2ja cos phi sine xi. That sine xi by 2 is nothing but beta a cos phi sine beta into d phi. This is your a d phi. The d phi is moved towards the side. And uh, when you substitute this, a phi is equal to dm by 2 pi r. So this is your dm by 2 pi r. And uh, we have to integrate. So this is a d phi. So how do you get uh, a phi? So how do you get a phi? So to get a phi, so to get uh, uh, a phi, to get a phi, what we have to do? Integrate on both sides. So when you integrate in a phi, integration of one d phi is nothing but a phi. On the second, on the other hand, we have uh, substituted dm and we are integrating equation 1.1 on both sides. When you integrate equation 1.1 on both sides, on the LHS, we get a phi. On the RHS, you get an integration symbol. On the RHS, you get an integration symbol. Same thing we are doing here. So we are taking equation one, substituting the uh, dm value, substituting the dm value, and uh, we are integrating to get a phi on the left side. And on the right side, this is dm by 4 pi r. So when we, the, the 2 pi r comes out because it's a constant, the other two, this two and that 4 pi r, that gets cancelled. And uh, j mu of phi, j is constant, mu is also constant, i is constant, a is constant. So sine beta a cos phi sine theta, these are all variables. This you're integrating to 0 to phi. And uh, you can uh, state that this whole integration that you have is nothing but uh, j mu a. This whole thing remains same. This integral is nothing but the Bessel function of first order because we have only one uh, integration with beta a sine theta. So this is your beta a uh, sine theta value. And uh, we look at the retarded current. The retarded current, you can see that uh, it's constant in integration. So you're taking out. So what about E phi? So the J omega A, this is J1 beta A sine theta. And uh, that is equal to uh, equation 1.6. So this is your equation 1.6 A phi. Equate, equate 1.6 and 1.7. So equation 1.6, you put it in 1.7. We have the electric field, E phi. The far electric field, E phi, is equal to minus J omega A phi. So this we have seen in uh, when we are doing the small loop uh, integration. So we have the far electric field as minus J omega A phi. Substitute the A phi value from uh, 1.6. So minus J, and uh, this is J and J j square so that goes omega i a and g so we can simplify this as uh, 60 pi beta i of a this is again from uh, the previous example where uh, they have e5 expression we have the e5 expression both of them are equal and this is the expression for four field for any of the loops and uh, this is the instantaneous electric field at large distance r from any loop of radius e. And we can simplify this further, uh, wherein we get e phi. 
Okay, this is a uh, substitution of uh, uh, this uh, by I naught value. And this I is a retarded current square brackets. And when we put that I value, uh, we get uh, uh, this. And when we need H theta, this is H theta. H theta is E phi by 120 pi. This is nothing but uh, the uh, impedance of the free space impedance. The free space meaning impedance here is air. Uh, so that is 125, E5 by 125, we get it as beta I A to R into J1 beta A sine theta. So this is an instantaneous magnetic field at a large distance R. This is H theta. This is H theta at a large distance R from any loop uh, of radius A. So similar to small loop uh, expression, here uh, what we do is so we find out uh, D phi. D phi is nothing but okay a d of a phi so the d of a phi at a point p okay this is a magnetic field so that is mu into dm by 2 pi r we get the dm the current moment the current moment uh, uh, due to a pair of opposite poles that is i the amount of current that is uh, flowing is i then uh, the dipole is a d phi so this is your dipole a d phi so the current i capital i then the magnetic dipole strength a d phi and this is at a distance so this is at a distance uh, cos phi oh, another one is at a distance xi, sine xi by 2 so now uh, this 2j is uh, for uh, uh, 2 and uh, j is for 90 degrees and opposite this derivation is done already in module 4 we are just taking it here this is for a dipole effect of our moment, current moment due to a pair of di dipoles. We are taking that intermediate results of a dipole uh, uh, effect and we are putting it here. The loop is being assumed, the circular loop is being assumed to be due to a pair of dipoles diametrically opposite. And the dipole uh, equation we are taking wherein the current moment uh, dm is equal to uh, i, the current flowing through the dipole, the length of the dipole, and the distance. One is cos phi and the other is sine xi by 2. The two, the point P, the affected point P is one is at uh, uh, 2. This is at a distance sine by psi by 2 and the other is at a distance cos sine, cos phi. And we also have seen the xi value. Then all this we have substituted. And then how do you get a phi? How do you get a phi? We have integrate, we have equation 1.1 where d a phi is equal to mu into dm. So mu into dm divided by 4 pi r. So in that dm value, you substitute this. The in the dm value, you substitute this and integrate both sides, you get a phi on one side. And the rest of the term two and four will become two here. So the rest of the terms are as it is. And when we look at this equation, this equation is uh, the sort of uh, Bessel function, J1 beta A uh, sine theta. This is like a Bessel uh, function. And uh, we need to find the differentiation of this. And we now have uh, the far electric field. We are interested in finding the far electric field. The far electric field is minus J omega A phi substitute the value of a phi and minus g omega. And from the table of uh, uh, formulae, from the table formulae, and this can be simplified, this is equal to 60 pi beta i of a by j1 into beta a sine theta. This is the expression of the far field for any of the loops. And this is uh, to find the instantaneous value, or we have to replace it by i, the retarded current i in brackets with i naught. So substitute that, we get the in peak value. To get the magnetic field, we have to define E phi by 120 pi. And get that gives me the magnetic field. Now, uh, we have seen that the spa small loop as a, a special case. Look at these two equations. In last class, we had uh, derived this equation E phi is 120 pi square I sine theta A by are uh, lambda square and corresponding h theta. This is for small loop. And uh, the loop antenna for any general case, uh, we have derived as, okay, we have derived as uh, 
e phi e phi is equal to 60 pi beta i a r into j1 beta a sin theta j1 beta a sin theta oh, this is the expression equation 1.8 for uh, loops of any size we uh, now we have to see, see that this equation 1.a this is for the loop of any sizes is the same as it, it will reduce to that of a small loop the small loop is a special case of uh, equation 1.a equation 1.a gives me for any one so now let us look at equation 1.8 and 1.9 both of them have this uh, bessel function j1 and let me call this as some value theta j1x. So now when we call it as j1x, you can use the approximation j1 of x is equal to x by 2. This happens when the argument x is small. When the argument x is small, when we integrate j1x, we can say that's almost equal to x by 2. And what about whenever you use some approximation, you may have an error. And the error becomes 0 when x tends to 0. And when x is equal to 1 by 3, and that is 0.33, the approximation gives 1% uh, error. So now if the perimeter of the loop, the C lambda is less than 1 by 3. In the previous example, when we started, we assume that uh, the perimeter is lambda by 4. The loop is not small. And when do you say the loop is not small, uh, the perimeters for quarter wavelength are double. That is lambda by 4 or larger. So lambda by 4 is 0.25 lambda. Now we are talking about uh, uh, the Bessel function j1 of x. And here x can go up to 1.3, 1 by 3. When x can go up to 1.3, the approximation is 1% error. Now, if the perimeter of the loop is lambda by 3, not lambda by 4, still slightly larger lambda by 3 or less. That is the circumference, uh, C lambda is less than 1 by 3. Now the Bessel approximation can be applied. What is the Bessel approximation? J1 of x is equal to x by 2. So from equation 1.8, the E phi, the far field, is given by 60 pi beta i capital I by R J1 into beta A sine theta. So now this beta A sine theta, so this uh, J1 uh, beta A sine theta, x, J1 x can be replaced by x by 2. So the, here x is beta A sine theta. So instead of J1 uh, beta A sine theta, I can have beta A sine theta by 2. Okay, when you simplify this, uh, so you keep this 2R and we also use uh, this I that is, uh, you have one more beta a sine theta. So you get uh, beta square. Okay, then we have this uh, it's beta square. This is beta into beta beta square, a into a a square. Then we have this sine theta i, then 60 pi as it is by 2r. So you use uh, uh, simplification for uh, a square. Okay, you use the simplification for a square. You keep this pi square as, as it is, i as it is, beta a square, beta square a square, that is uh, given by a by lambda, that is uh, the square root of a by lambda. So you can simplify this as this. Same thing that like uh, a small loop, or we have, So a square is replaced by a by pi. So this is your a by pi. And uh, we also have uh, beta is equal to two pi by lambda. So beta square here, the beta square here uh, becomes, uh, so this is beta is two pi by lambda and a is, uh, that is a square. So a square is uh, a by pi. Then beta is this, so beta square. What is beta square here? Uh, beta square is 4 uh, uh, pi square by lambda square. Then what will happen? 1 pi and 1 pi uh, gets uh, uh, cancelled. And this pi and uh, this pi, you get uh, pi square. And uh, this 4 out of this 4, uh, 1, 2 goes. Only 1, 2 will remain. So you can simplify this as 120. 
pi square i sin theta by r into a lambda square. So this is about uh, the simplification. And when we look at this expression, this expression is the same as at equation eight. The equation eight is nothing but the far field equation for a small loop. So this equation 1.a is a far field for any signs. And that will be the same as uh, the equation for a small loop. This is a small loop. The only thing that we are doing is we are approximating j1 of x as equal to x by 2. This happens when the value of x is less. So value of x is less or x tends to 1 by 3. Or in terms of perimeter, uh, the c lambda is uh, less than 1 by 3. So and in this case, both the, the e5 and h theta, so this is h theta, uh, tend to be the same. Equation 1.9 uh, tend, uh, tends to be equal to equation 9. Then the next uh, section is a radiation resistance of loop. So this is reference 7.7 .7 of uh, cross text. Uh, till now, we have uh, finished uh, the introduction of loop antenna. We have done the derivation for far field of a small loop, then uh, the far field for a loop of any size. And we also have found out from the far field of uh, uh, any size, uh, the small loop is a special case. Uh, that will happen only when uh, the perimeter is uh, lambda by three or less. Then the next topic that we are talking about is radiation resistance of loop. Then the when you look at uh, this radiation of a resistance, how do you define the resistance? We take the pointing vector and uh, we find out the total power that is radiated uh, in the entire sphere. And then uh, the power is equated to the squ uh, square of the effective curve. Remember what is P? P is I square R. So similarly here, when I'm talking about the resistance R, find the P, P is a uh, power. And how do you get the total power radiated? How do you get the total power radiated? The total power radiated is obtained by uh, integrating the pointing vector over the entire sphere. And then this power that we get is equal to I square R. I square is a, a I is the effective current in the loop and r is the radiation distance of the loop. And when we replace it by i naught, you get the peak current in time on the loop. So we have certain assumption. One assumption is once again, the current is uniform and in, in phase for any radius a. If this is not satisfied, if the current generally, if you have uh, a bigger loop, uh, you have the spatial, the space and time coming into picture, so you uh, try to maintain the phase uh, constant and the current uniform by using phase shifters, multiple feeds or other uh, devices. So look at this uh, figure. So you're trying to maintain the current. This is the current I inside the loop. This is a feed point. From this feed point, you're being feeding to multiple. This whole thing is one loop. Okay, and the loop is divided into many portions. And all of them are being fed by phase shifters. Okay, this is a common point. This is a feed system for providing in phase uh, uh, current. So you have this equation. Now, in this case, a power P uh, is equal to I naught square into R. Okay, now the radiation resistance is nothing but rearrange. RR is equal to 2P divided by I naught square. Two goes up and I naught squared uh, comes down. So now uh, this, what, what do you mean? What is the physical meaning of this resistance? This radiation resistance of loop antenna is nothing but the resistance that is measurable at the loop terminals connected to the twin line or coaxial cable. You may connect, this is your loop antenna. And with this loop antenna, you can connect it to transmission line or you may connect to coaxial cable. If you're connecting to a coaxial cable, the center one is carrying the, uh, the signal, the outer one is grounded. So similarly here, transmission line, uh, you have the grounding later. So when you measure at this terminals, when you measure at this terminals or at this terminals, you have a resistance R. And we are trying to find out the resistance of this loop. 
So how is the, how is the resistance R of this loop radiation resistance given by 2P divided by I naught square? Okay, now how do you find the power P? We have seen that the power P is nothing but the pointing vector integrated over the large sphere. Okay, so now let us look at the uh, pointing vector at a far field. The average pointing vector at a far field SR is given by half of, uh, this is your uh, magnetic field, H uh, square of this and REZ, Z is the intrinsic uh, impedance of the medium. Here uh, then uh, medium, the impedance of the medium, is the medium here is free space. So we also have the value of uh, uh, H theta. So this is H theta actually, this is not H, you know, this is not seen properly. This is H theta. H theta is equal to E5 by 120 pi. This we already have seen, the far field. And this is a far field expression for any loop. So this is a far field expression for any loop that is beta i into a divided by j1 beta a sine theta uh, divided by 2r. r is a radius of the loop. Now, when I look at this uh, average pointing vector, and that is half uh, into h square into real of z, and I substitute this, Okay, you substitute this, you have that uh, 60 pi, and that uh, simplifies this half, this half, and this half, two into two becomes four. And we also have that expression 60 pi. Okay, let me go back. You have this uh, expression previously defined. So this is nothing but uh, 60 pi beta. Can you just look at this? Uh, 60 pi beta i into a uh, divided by r. Now this becomes that 60 pi now, the 60 pi now is uh, divided by four. 60 divided by four uh, becomes 15 pi. And then uh, beta square into a into i naught square. And this is being h square. That's all being done. And r e z, r e z is 120 pi. And when you simplify this uh, for the uh, integral of SR over a large space, if you have to integrate over a large space, we need double integration because it's 3D. So double integrate 0 to pi and 0 to 2 pi. And out of this, these are all constants. 15 pi beta i, I naught square is constant. Internally, we have uh, j1 square uh, beta i uh, sine theta d theta into d phi. And uh, that uh, you can further simplify to be 0 to pi j1 square sine theta into sine theta d theta. And when you integrate 0 to 2 pi into uh, d phi, uh, integrate of that, oh, we can get uh, integral of 0 to 2 pi d phi. Integral of 0 to 2 pi d phi is 2 pi. So this portion into this portion. Okay, assume that this is constant. So integral of zero to two pi into d phi, this gives me uh, two pi, upper limit minus low power, lower limit, two pi. And that two pi multiplied by 15 pi, that two pi multiplied by 15 pi, what do you get? 30 pi square, 30 pi square. 15 pi into two pi is 13 pi square. So you have beta i, I naught square as it is. Then the internal integration remains as it is. The integral integration is 0 to pi. This term remains as it is. Now let us look at this term. That is uh, the internal term here. Once again, let us use a approximation. In the case of a small loop, uh, this approximation, we, we know that uh, the j1x becomes x by 2 if x is small. So here j1 square into beta a sine theta, that becomes beta a uh, sine theta by uh, 2, and that's a whole square, okay? And I, outside, I have one more sine theta. Add to it, you'll get a sine cube theta by uh, 4. So that 4, you take it out. So when you take it out 4, that 30 becomes, so when you take it out 4, 30 by 4 becomes 15 by 2. The pi squared and uh, beta a. So here, this beta a, the whole square is there. So the beta a, beta square a square, when you take it out, 
already we have beta s a whole square and this whole square together becomes beta a to the power four and i naught square is left as it is and uh, sine cube uh, d theta sine cube uh, theta by uh, d theta so when you integrate uh, uh, sine cube uh, uh, theta by successive uh, integration what is sine cube it is sine to the power of four divided by four and finally uh, you have sine pi and this you can simplify it as uh, 10 pi square uh, beta to the power of 4 into 10 to the power 4 the 3 comes down 3 and 3 fives are and again this 4 and that 2 2 goes only 2 so 5 into 2 10 pi square and this the simplification is there and now like, let us look at the area. The area is defined as capital A is pi A square. A is the radius. And so here A to the power 4. If you have A to the power 4, you can represent it as uh, A by pi. And for A square, it is A by pi. A to the power 4, it is A square divided by pi square. So when you divide A square by pi square, the pi square goes here. The pi square goes here. 10 remains beta to the power of 4, i naught squared, and this capital A squared. Now, this is nothing but uh, this is the power that is delivered to the loop terminals, assuming that there are no antenna losses. So, when I equate on this side one, on the other side, the power that I had got um, by the pointing vector, I get half into uh, r into i naught squared and uh, simplify this put rr on one side the rest of the uh, terms on the other side you get uh, a square by uh, rr on one side and then i naught square i naught square gets cancelled so i naught square and i naught square gets cancelled and uh, you substitute uh, uh, beta also as uh, 2 pi by lambda substitute uh, beta as uh, uh, 2 pi by lambda uh, so we get a square is left and 2 pi to the power 4, you simplify. You get A by lambda square, the whole square. This is nothing but uh, the circumference to the power 4. Okay. And this can be expressed in terms of C lambda also. Or uh, you can also leave it here. That is around approximately 31,200. A is the area of the loop divided by lambda square. So this is the resistance of the loop. So what's the resistance of the loop? 31,200 into area square divided by lambda square. Uh, what is lambda square? Lambda square is a wavelength. Lambda square is a wavelength. And uh, what about uh, uh, the value of this resistance? The, ra the radiation resistance given by this uh, uh, equation is 2.5 when you have a loop of lambda by 2 when a is uh, lambda by 10 okay this is uh, sorry not a this is a perimeter okay the perimeter c is uh, lambda by 10 the perimeter c is uh, uh, lambda by 10 then uh, this will reduce to lambda by 10 or you can simplify by just 1 by 10 1 by 10 is uh, something like 1 by 10, c to the power 4. c to the power 4 is 1 by 10 power 4. And you will get something like 2.5 ohms. So then uh, if I have a multi-turn antenna, uh, this a by lambda square is replaced by n. n is the number of turns. You add n along with a by uh, n lambda square. So then you have four multi-turn antenna that is multi-turn loop antenna. Here we have only single turn. Single turn is this. What is the approximate resistance? The approximation, approximate uh, resistance when the perimeter, okay, the very perimeter is uh, 2 pi uh, r or uh, 2 pi r, okay, or in terms of lambda, it is 2 pi, it is lambda by 10. Uh, in that case, uh, and the uh, equation reduces to 2.5 ohms. And uh, if it's a multi term, you just put uh, n.
going further. Uh, if I am looking at the radiation resistance of any radius E, here we are talking about uh, only small loop. So in that case, we cannot use approximation. So we cannot use uh, approximation. Instead of approximation, we have to integrate the whole equation. So when we integrate the whole equation, you have zero beta A uh, J to Y, and you have to use this beta A equal to C lambda. That is a circumference in terms of lambda. And you get an expression like this. Okay, this is without uh, the approximation. What was the approximation? Approximation was uh, J1x is equal to x by two, if x was small. But here, since x is not small, we have to take the integration directly. Uh, we have to take the integration directly. And when we integrate that, when we integrate it, especially when uh, uh, C is quite large, something let us say C lambda is greater than five, then we have to integrate it. And when we integrate it, uh, this will reduce to uh, something like 3720A by lambda after integration. And this is a radiation resistance of a large loop. And uh, if you have a loop parameter, C lambda is equal to 10 lambda. Okay, this is not lambda by three and below, rather it is 10 lambda. In that case, uh, the resistance you can see from 2.5 ohms, it has increased to 6,000 ohms. So this is for a large loop, the radiation resistance has increased. And between one by three and five, this we have taken for C lambda greater than five. The previous case, we have talk, uh, talked about lambda three and less. Okay, lesser than uh, uh, lambda by three. The uh, approximation error is 1%. But if we have C lambda greater than five, uh, we can use another type of approximation where the integral reduces to one. Okay, in the uh, for uh, this, uh, the approximation is J1x is equal to x by two. And for C lambda greater than five, what is the approximation? The integral is one. Instead of x by two, instead of, uh, instead of x by two, it becomes one. What about the approximation? One small approximation is x by two. The other is a large approximation. What is a large approximation? One. And in between, in between one by three and five, we have to evaluate uh, using the transformation or this. And you can also use uh, the tabulated functions, that is a function of uh, tabular columns. And then we have this uh, development for uh, the integral of this. Okay, uh, the integration is little uh, Bessel function. You can use uh, the table values, tabulated values for the upper and lower values. So zero to two uh, X J two Y is one minus uh, these values. Okay, this is from the uh, asymptotic tabular uh, development or tabulated values. This is for the special case uh, for C lambda between one by three and five. For C lambda uh, less than one by three, less than uh, one by three, we have uh, the approximation J one X is equal to X by two. For C lambda greater than five, we have the uh, expression J one X integration of j1x is one, j1x is one. In between this, in between this, we have to use the tabulated values. So once we use the tabulated values, so we can also integrate by the uh, series for the Bessel function, uh, j21, or <laughs> this, you can also use, uh, you can plot these values actually. So when we plot these values, uh, you can see that, uh, so the solid line uh, is uh, the actual value. And uh, when this loop circumference, you can see this loop circumference. So this is one by three and less, one by three and less. And uh, this is for five and above. Uh, so this is uh, circumference is uh, five and above. In between uh, you have, the dash lines, uh, this dash line gives you this approximation. That is 197 by C4. That is you're extending this. 
so you're extending this and when you extend this curve below that is 592 by is lambda it becomes this curve okay you have the two curves okay this is a radiation resistance as a function of this you can uh, plot the exact values the exact values are given by the uh, solid line the solid line gives you the uh, exact lines then uh, we see this approximation 197 by c lambda 4 uh, this works for this works for c lambda see can you see this this is 197 c lambda 4 this works for uh, uh, when the loop perimeter is less than lambda by 3. So this is uh, lambda by 3 is around 0.33. So for this 0.33 and above, this is this. And you're exp extending the approximation. And above 5, above 5, okay, you have this ap approximation. And this approximation is 592 C lambda. In between these two curves, in these two, you can use either uh, this approximation or you can use the exact values or you can use the exact value this is a radiation resistance versus a loop uh, circumference in wavelengths then the next one that we are talking about is uh, directivity of uh, loop current antennas uh, with the uniform uh, current This is the last section of this uh, loop antenna. So in the previous case, we have find out the radiation resistance of the loop antenna. What was the radiation resistance of the loop antenna? Solid curves gives you the exact radiation resistance. And then we have two approximations. One approximation for uh, loop circumference, uh, C lambda less than 1 by 3. Another for, and for C less than 1 by 3, it is 197 uh, C to the power 4. And the other one is this, that is 592 C lambda. Uh, this is for C lambda greater than five. So both the, through for all the three cases, C lambda less than one by three, C lambda greater than five, C lambda between one by three and five, we have found out the uh, expression for radiation resistance of the loop. The next one is the directivity of the circular loop antennas. So the directivity is defined as, how do you define the a directivity of an antenna? It's a ratio of maximum radiation intensity to the average radiation intensity. Ratio of maximum to average radiation intensity. So how do you get uh, the maximum radiation intensity? That's already derived previously in module two, the module uh, four rather. Uh, the, that is given by equation 3.3, chapter 3.3 of cross textbook. So that is multiplied by R square. And average intensity, you have another equation 3.5 that is being divided by 4 pi. Both of them have been reproduced here. 3.3 uh, into R square uh, divided by 4 pi into equation 3.5. So this is for uh, the directivity of a circular loop uh, taken from the previously derived expression. So now here in this expression, you have an angle theta. So theta is the value for which uh, the field is maximum, uh, which we already have seen. So now let us look at uh, a certain approximation once again. Here, once again, if the circumference is less than one by three, the C lambda is less than by one by three, or the perimeter is less than lambda by three then uh, the directivity expression so this is your previous example okay and this is your previous example uh, sorry this is the previous expression so here once again if it is less if it is less uh, what is uh, uh, j1x reducing to j1x is reducing to x by 2. so here x is uh, in the numerator it is x is uh, c lambda sine theta and the whole square that is c lambda square sine square theta and in the denominator you also have a y j2 y substitute for y also that will become y square and uh, you simplify and uh, we get this 
expression. This is 3 by 2. The expression is uh, 3 by 2 uh, sine squared by theta. And once again, theta is for the value for which it is maximum. Sine theta maximum is 1. So it reduces to 3 by 2. Okay, sine theta, that is sine 90 degrees 1. And this is the same as that of a short uh, a dielectric uh, pole. Uh, we have already derived for a dipole antenna, that is short uh, dipole antenna. And for the short dipole antenna, the directivity is uh, 3 by 2. Similarly here, the directivity D for a small loop for C lambda less than 1 by 3, it is 3 by 2. And for a large loop for C lambda greater than 5, once again, take this equation 4.1 and uh, we use a uh, expression that is uh, j when x is approximately 1. And uh, once you use this, uh, this uh, denominator reduces to 1. Numerator, you have uh, C lambda uh, j when square into uh, C lambda uh, sine theta. And for any loop with uh, C lambda greater than 1.84, so the maximum value of this is 0 0.582 and uh, the directivity of this will reduce to d equal to 0 0.68 c lambda. So once again, you plot the directivity as a loop uh, one. So you have the two ap approximation, one for uh, c lambda less than one by three, that is maximum three by two. This is one extreme, the directivity that is equal to three by two for c lambda greater than one by three another extreme for C lambda greater than 5. So in this uh, case, uh, the directivity D reduces to 2 into C lambda J1 square. And simplifying that, uh, we get is the directivity D. The directivity D is 0.68 uh, lambda. This is a, a maximum value that it is uh, being verified by the figure also. That is being verified by the uh, figure also. In the figure we get it by experimental variation. So that 0.68 lambda, the 0.68 C lambda, when we look at it, uh, it's given by the straight line. Okay, this is given by the straight line application. And this is three by two. This is constant. Three by two is 1.5, that is constant. But actual directivity keeps varying. This is a sinusoidal function, that is J1 when you integrate that J1 exact value. Whereas this straight lines, uh, three by two for a certain value. Okay, and for a certain value, it is 0.68 C lambda. So you get a dotted line, straight line and a dotted line like this. But uh, the solid long curve is uh, uh, the actual directivity. The solid curve is your actual uh, directivity as a function of uh, uh, the as a function of the uh, circumference, loop circumference. There are certain solved problems in the textbook, but these solved problems require, uh, uh, this is a, one of the solved problems for lambda by 10 diameter loop. So here they're given one example that uh, uh, lambda by 10 uh, loop is provided with a ground plane. They've asked the directivity of gain, assuming no losses. And uh, this is without the ground plane. And uh, the second one is, uh, uh, they have the ground plane. First one is A is without the ground plane. Second one is uh, the loop with the ground plane. So this is the one. Okay, you can see that uh, uh, this is the one. So this is a ground plane and uh, this is a feed arrangement from which you feed the coaxial cable and the loop circumference is lambda by 10. And this is a field pattern. You can see this is 180 degree. This is a field pattern in polar plot. And uh, you also have one more image of this, the coaxial cable and with the ground plane. So they solve this uh, using that uh, 
the directivity d is uh, lambda by 10 okay so what is given here uh, the loop uh, the radius is uh, lambda by 10 if the lay it is lambda by 10 it is small so in that case uh, the d is given by 3 by 5 the d is uh, 3 by 2 i'm sorry that is nothing but 1.5 same thing the d is 1.5 and for dBi, you say 10 log to base 10, 1.5, you get something like 1.76 dBi. So this portion is easy. Uh, the first uh, expression for the loop alone, which is not grounded, okay, we have uh, d is equal to 3 by 2 because uh, we have lambda by 10, uh, which is a small loop. So the directivity D, the maximum, the directivity D is maximum, and that is given by 3 by 2. And for 3.2, it is 1.5, or in case of DBI, it is 10 log. But if we have a ground plane, uh, we have to take the formula from the table 9.1. So if the same problem is given in the uh, exam, they have to give this uh, uh, table of formulae. And here they have the exact expression for this, uh, where RR is a, a 197 C to the power 4 lambda, that is the radiation resistance. And uh, the C lambda is lambda by 10, that is nothing but uh, 0 0.1 uh, pi uh, into uh, divided by lambda, lambda and lambda gets cancelled, 0 0.1 pi, uh, the whole square, and you get that 1.29 ohms. But to get this expression, we need a table. To solve this problem, we need the table of formula. And we can see that the RM is 1.60 ohm. For this also, we need. And uh, this reduces to 12.45 or 11 dpi. So only the first part of the problem, this is in the textbook. For the first problem, first part of the problem, we can do it directly. So what's the first part of the problem? Uh, directivity of the loop, that is, uh, since it is lambda by 10, d is equal to uh, 3 by 2 or 1.5. For the second part, we need the formula, uh, the table formula, and also we need RR, RM, mutual resistance of the loop. And we don't have an expression for the mutual resistance of the loop. Once again, you have to go to the table and do it. So this one, you have to be there. Then there's one more solved problem. Uh, here, uh, the diameter of the loop is uh, lambda pi. And once again, uh, it is uh, a quad antenna equivalent to lambda by 2. And you have this uh, expression. He says this loop is similar to a square loop or a quad. A quad means four dipoles are there. Or uh, these four dipoles, you can uh, L, uh, L and L, you can act, act, add it together. So this is equal to, to folded pi by two dipole. She wants to prove from this example that uh, the loop antenna is the same as a square loop. At the starting of the chapter, we have seen the same as a quad antenna. A square loop is like four dipoles. So dipole one, two, three, four, and we are taking the effect of two diametrically opposite poles. Now, instead of a square loop or a quad uh, or a quad antenna, he can say he says that this is equal to folded uh, lambda by two dipole. So this is lambda, and this is lambda. L is equal to see the the cell and this cell together. Uh, you can make it as one, and this as one. So this is folded dipole. Okay, the quad becomes folded dipole. And in this case, uh, okay, this is lambda by pi. Lambda by pi becomes 0.318 lambda. And this is a circumference of the loop is 0.318 lambda. And uh, this whole thing is mounted at a distance. This is your ground plane. From the ground plane, the distance is lambda by 10. And it is connected by a coaxial cable. According to him, once again, you take from the table, uh, you take from the uh, uh, table, uh, you have the definition of D, directivity. Previous example also, you had uh, the definition of D as 2 into square root of RR into divided by RR minus RM, uh, the radiation resistance into sine 2 pi by 10 whole square into 1.5. 
So similarly, 1.5 is maximum, 3 by 2. Same thing, 2 into square root of RR into RR minus RM sine of 2 pi by 10 whole square. And uh, again, from this equation, RR is equal to C to the power of 4, 197. And uh, RM, he shown that 157 ohms. All these are taken from the tabulated values. And substituting it here, D is something like 10.2. So for this uh, second solved problem that you have in the textbook, uh, you need uh, a lot of equations like this and tabulated values. So what exactly they would like to specify that is, uh, this is a diameter of the loop, okay? It has less than one dB, less than gain of this. Its resistance is much larger and it gives a smaller Q, a broader bandwidth and less susceptibility to losses. Uh, compared to a square loop or a folded dipole. Uh, compared to a folded dipole or a square loop, uh, what about the features of the uh, loop antenna? The features of the loop antenna are, it has a larger radiation resistance. Since it has a larger radiation resistance, what about its Q uh, quality factor? It reduces. If your resistance is large, uh, the losses are more, the quality factor is less. And if Q is small, what about the bandwidth? The bandwidth and Q are inversely related. So this is sharper Q, lesser bandwidth. So Q is proportional to one by bandwidth, one by bandwidth. And if the Q is less, if the Q reduces, if the Q reduces, what happens to the bandwidth? Bandwidth increases, same thing. It gives a smaller Q, a larger bandwidth. And uh, what about the resistance? Resistance is much larger. He wants to prove this uh, uh, point. And, and that finishes your uh, chapter. Next, I mean, this uh, particular portion of loop antennas. Uh, the next portion that we're talking about will be horn antennas and rectangular horn antennas. That will be from reference 7.19 and 7.20 in the textbook. So the last two uh, problems, solved problems uh, that are there in the textbook, uh, if, uh, if you have to solve it, if they have to give only for the first problem, you can solve directly. Uh, that is D is equal to three by two. For the second part, you need uh, the formulae from the table. They have to give the list of the donors. And uh, for the second example, solved example, what they're doing is they're taking the same dimensions one of a loop, one of a square loop, and the other of a folded dipole. And uh, they are proving that uh, uh, the loop antenna compared to the square loop, etc., has a smaller Q because of a larger uh, radiation resistance. And hence, it is a broader bandwidth. So though we say that loop antenna is same as the square loop, uh, square antenna, the loop antenna is the same as the square antenna or a dipole, four, four short dipoles, or a folded dipole. Since so of four short dipoles, you have a folded dipoles. There are slight differences. The difference is given by the uh, radiation resistance, uh, which is larger. So hence, you have a smaller Q and a broader bandwidth. Okay, so today's class, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, covered uh, quite a bit of the portion. So, uh, we had uh, covered the loop antenna as a general case, the loop antenna is a special case, the radiation resistance of loop, and then the directivity of uh, the circular loop antennas. All this four uh, we had uh, done. Okay, so now uh, the next class we'll be talking about horn antennas and uh, circular horn antennas, rectangular horn antennas. So all this we are using approximations and the approximations are two portions. One C by la lambda less than lambda by three. Another approximation is C lambda greater than five for both radiation uh, resistance uh, and the directivity. We have approximations, two types of approximation, one small approximation and one large approximation. And in between we have the exact value. So thank you.